Hello, I am Dr. Burcu Kolukasa from Marmara University, Istanbul, Turkey, and I will present our study named Carmel 2 Deficiency and Various Clinical Phenotypes Warning Signs for Early Diagnosis. The capping protein regulator and myosin 1 linker 2, shortly Carmel 2 protein, regulates actin polymerization, cytoskeletal dynamics, and cell motility acts in CD28 co-signalization, T-cell differentiation, and activation. Human Carmel 2 gene was first shown as a down-regulated gene in the affected skin tissue of psoriasis vulgaris patients, but the combined immunodeficiency syndrome caused by the homozygous loss of function mutations of the gene was reported in 2016. These are some of the first articles describing the Carmel 2 gene and the Carmel 2 deficiency. And this is a diagram of the Carmel 2 protein domains. There are five domains of this protein and 1,435 amino acids. And all patients with combined immunodeficiency have mutations in only the first three domains. And our patient cohort have mutations in the first two domains, the plextrin homology domain and leucine rich repeat domain, which are shown in red. So the clinical manifestations associated with Carmel 2 deficiency so far include recurrent respiratory tract infections, skin infections, mucocutinous candidiasis, other skin manifestations including atopic dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis, psoriasis, and photosensitivity, allergic manifestations such as asthma and allergic rhinitis, very early onset inflammatory bowel disease, aphthostomatitis, esophagitis, mycobacterial infections, growth retardation, and EBV-related smooth muscle tumors. We present a single center experience on Carmel 2 deficiency, and we will provide detailed information on clinical and immunological futures of these patients. So a total of seven patients who were diagnosed with biallelic loss of function mutations in the gene were enrolled in the study. The genetic diagnosis was made by next generation sequencing confirmed by Sanger sequencing. Detailed clinical and demographic informations were retrieved from their medical records. Peripheral lymphocyte subset analysis, intracellular protein and cytokine staining and proliferation assays were performed. And the study was approved by the local ethics committee. A total of seven patients, one male and six females from four independent families were included. Mean current age was 16.7 years. Mean age at onset of symptoms was 49 months. And all families had consanguinity except for family two. Parents from this family were from the same village. So this is the demographic information of the patients. We can say that all parents have consanguinity. Six patients were orig originated from Turkey, while one patient, patient five, was originated from Azerbaijan. Uh, he was also the only male patient. The youngest patient was 6.5 years old and the oldest was 24 years old in this cohort. And the earliest age at onset of symptoms was one month old. Clinical findings among patients were patient one and patient two had early onset IBD presenting at ages 9 and 10 respectively, and they had mild eczema. They didn't have recurrent skin or respiratory infections. Patient 3 and patient 4 had warts, recurrent respiratory tract infections, asthma. They both had eczema and growth retardation. Patient 5 had very early onset IBD, eczema, and asthma. Patients six and seven both had mild to moderate eczema. They had molluscum, herpes, and skin abscesses. They had asthma and recurrent respiratory tract infections. And it was more severe in patient six because she had around six or seven sinusitis per year. And she had severe pneumonia, including one 
ICU admission with mechanic ventilation. And these are some of photographs from the patients. This is patient three who had dermatitis and also widespread warts on the same patient's hands. This is an upper airway bronchoscopy of patient seven. She had recurrent croup and she had a hoarse voice. So the bronchoscopy revealed warts around her vocal cords. And this is a photograph of patient six who had warts around her eyelids. Overall, the clinical features of our patients included recurrent respiratory tract infections in four patients, which led to bronchiectasis in three patients. Four patients had failure to thrive. The most common symptom was eczema seen in six patients, followed by asthma seen in five patients. Allergic rhinitis was seen in two patients. Warts were seen in four patients. Candida infections were seen in three patients. Herpes infections and molluscum and skin abscesses were seen in two patients. Inflammatory bowel disease was present in three patients. And the follow-up of our patients were, patient one and two were diagnosed with atypical Crohn's disease first, and then they had the genetic diagnosis. They received various immunosuppressants, including mesalamine, prednisolone, azathioprine, and infliximab. Both underwent partial or hemicolectomy at ages 21 and 20, which improved their abdominal pain and bloody diarrhea symptoms. Patient 5 also had very early onset IBD, and he received mesalamine and prednisolone and showed partial response to therapy, so he still has intermittent diarrhea. He also received inhaled corticosteroids and the asthma is controlled. Patient three and four were initiated azithromycin prophylaxis for recurrent respiratory infections and inhaled corticosteroids for asthma. Patient three also had bronchiectasis and more frequent lower respiratory tract infections, so she also received IVIG. Topical treatments for her warts were not beneficial. And patient four, her sister, was diagnosed with growth hormone deficiency, so she is currently receiving growth hormone replacement therapy. Patient six and seven had both skin and respiratory infections and onychomycosis, so they had trimetoprim sulfometoxazole and fluconazole prophylaxis and IVIG. They received inhaled and intranasal corticosteroids for asthma and rhinitis, and overall their infections and respiratory problems responded well to these therapies. So among their laboratory findings, none of the patients had neutropenia or lymphopenia. Three patients had eosinophilia. Three patients had low IgG levels, and three had normal IgG levels. Only one patient had elevated IgG, IgM, and IgA levels, but she had low IgE levels. And we can see that none of the patients had seriously elevated total IgE levels. So we tested the specific antibody titers of patients, and we examined that all patients had some defective protein antibody responses, such as anti-HBS, it was negative in all patients. And we tested isomaglutinin levels for polysaccharide antigens, and it was positive in all of them. Then we performed lymphocyte subset analysis, and all patients had normal CD3 T cell counts and CD4 T cell counts. Only one patient had mildly low CD8 T cells and mildly low CD19 B cells. But it was interesting that six patients out of seven had low natural killer cell counts. Among B cell subsets, four patients had elevated naive B cells, five patients had low unclass switched memory B cells, and three patients had low class switched memory B cells. And among T cell subsets, the most prominent symptom was six patients had elevated naive CD4 T cells and five patients had low exhausted memory T cells. 
And then we compared these T cell subsets with age-related healthy controls. And in the upper right graphic, we can see that naive CD4 T cells were significantly higher among patients compared to healthy controls and central memory and effector memory CD4 T cells were significantly lower in patients compared to healthy controls. But this wasn't prominent among CD8 T cell subsets. We also tested Carmel2 protein expression in all patients. And on the left in green, we can see a healthy control and the others, one example from each family, all patients had low Carmel2 protein expression in their CD4 T cells. Then we tested the follicular T helper cells and we showed that all patients had significantly lower TFH compared to healthy controls. Then we tested the Treg and CTLA4 expression and we showed that patients had lower CD25 FOXP3 Tregs